Hey folks, this is Lindsay Hellison with Sports Psychology Solutions back in the building. East Lansing High School here with freshman coach Preston Watson, good friend of mine, good buddy of mine, yes, good sir. guy all the way around here representing. He is um, doing a great job with the next generation of athletes coaching freshmen. I think that's probably one of the hardest things to do because it's not the sexy varsity team. It's not the JV that's kind of in between. It's freshmen. And uh, my experience, and freshmen don't know much. Yeah, I mean, they get out here and, you know, they think that uh, they're the real deal all the time. And sometimes you got to let these kids know that there's there's more to it than sports. And, and there's a lot of things in life that you have to teach these freshmen from time mm -hmm. to time. And so um, the, the main reason I got into coaching was because I didn't have that person in my life when I went to school who could show me the ropes. And so sure. um, when I was done playing and, and that phase of my life was over, I said, well, let me get back to the kids. I, I right. always wanted someone to get back to me. And right. so that's why I got into it originally. Right. You know, Preston, I think you're really well suited particularly for the freshman job and the freshman job is a really it's a tough way to go because like I said it's not the high profile varsity piece but that's in your future no doubt but the reason I say that about you I've always observed you to be very meticulous it's like you're okay with just being locked in and being focused on one particular thing and does that play into your coaching and what's going on yeah I think it does all the time I mean I, we get in ourselves and we start uh we start getting out there and we'll be in practice and stuff and they want to move on to the next thing so quickly. Mm. Um, and sometimes you got to sit down and you got to hone in on one thing. Yeah. Um, when it, can, it gets to certain players as well, uh, from time to time, you, you have these directions that you're trying to give out. And something happens in the game or something happens in practice, and you really want to sit down and you want to focus with those guys. Yeah. Um, I take that to the classroom as well. Uh, all my guys know that if they don't feel comfortable going to talk to the teacher about what they need to get done, um, they got to pass the class. So the next person up is me. And so we'll go together and we'll sit down and we'll talk about it in a comfortable atmosphere. Sometimes it's easier with three than it is two. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I really sit down and I really like to focus in with those guys. Cause yeah, it seems like you had that, you had that connection. Um, at this point, there's other things I want to talk about. You know, I've always been about uh, mental toughness with sports psychology solutions, but the more and more things, whether it's in the national headlines, the local Michigan news, or just, you know, right at home, whether it's my hometown, Detroit, or here in Lansing, it's really talking about mental health. And I think that's something that is a huge stigma behind it, whether you're talking to, you know, uh, particular communities or whatnot. But what I'm finding and what I'm motivated by is to talk more to make this a more comfortable conversation to have with young people. Because, again, as we talk about how important it is to stay disciplined, to stay focused, to be a great free throw shooter, how are you with being able to talk about how you feel? How are you expressing yourself? And what I do want to do in the time that I have you and get your thoughts is really talk about some resources that are out there. Um, everything from the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, and I'll put that number up. It's 1-800-273-8255. And the interesting thing about that person, it's one thing to be able to pick up a phone and call a hotline, but we're more in the texting, you mm -hmm. know, whether it's from a generational standpoint or not. So I also want to talk about the crisis text line. That means you can text this line when it comes down to dealing with issues of suicide and mental health. And that text number is 741 741. I have it locked in my phone, Preston. It'll be up on the screen, but I will continue to talk about that. And uh, throughout the course of the discussion, I want to have with you and some other great people as well. We'll talk about some other resources. But just want to get your feedback. When you hear the discussion of mental health, whether it's in sports or not, what do you think about when you hear that? Um, a lot of the times, these kids, they, they get lost in the shuffle. Um, there's this one kid who, you know, he's real tough and he, he comes into practice and um, not my particular guys, but in, in an instance where it's the kids who don't show it. They, the kids who show that everything's okay and they don't talk about their home life and they post on social media about how their life is so good. Um, a lot of times those are the kids that you have to worry about and those are the kids that you just want to ask them, hey, how are you doing today? Mm -hmm. Checking in on them. Uh, I, I make it a big priority every day when I walk in the gym. You got to talk to coach when you get so there. Oh, so they already know that they got to do a round robin to make their way through and talk to you. Tell me about Absolutely. that. Where did you get that idea from? Um, I actually picked it up from our great uh, JV coach, Kevin Mays. Um, well, I sat on his bench for a while, and he would come in the gym, and I'd go, and I'd try to talk to him. He said, hold on, give me one sec. Got to go say hi to the guys. And he walks around, and he gives every guy a high five, a handshake. He daps them up. Um, that makes them feel comfortable with you. Um, a lot of times they're 14, 15, 16 year old kids and you're an adult to them and so right. a lot of times they don't know how to come and talk to you. Right. So to break that barrier is the first step in, in making these kids feel comfortable. So if something does arise, if they're, do, if they're having a hard time in school, if kids are bullying them, if things aren't going okay at home, 
you set that expectation that they can come to you and they can talk to you about anything that's in their life. And so I, I think that's important, and I grab a lot of things from him. He, he's taught me a lot in my time here in East Lansing. Well, that's wonderful because it seems like there's that level of consistency that the young people can come to expect to say, you know what, maybe I don't want to talk today, but I know he's going to come up tomorrow. Maybe that'll be it. So you're saying be out there and not be so, uh, as Coach Izzo would say, uh, so big time that you can't go out and connect. So you're saying it's really important that coaches can do that. Any other suggestions? That's an excellent idea. Um, I, I mean, outside of that, uh, I just think that kids need to feel more comfortable about talking about mental health. Um, like we talked about before, a lot of these kids are taught and it's ingrained in them through social media or through these rappers or through some of these other athletes or their peers and their role models that it's you're meant to be tough if you're you're, mm -hmm. you're a male you're not supposed to have emotions right um and that's a stigma that we have to move away from and right it, and we have to move into a, a space um where we can go out and you can talk about anything in your life if it's with your mom if it's with your dad your brother your sister your girlfriend your counselor your coach you have to be okay about talking about it and i think that that's the first step for us to move on so that we can have better mental health going forward. Right. Uh, this will be considered a mental health moment. Uh, you and some other people that we're going to be featuring will be part of that, and we'll make sure we put these resources up. But I just want to thank you for all that you do, not just in the hoop culture, because we love the hoop culture, but you're talking about moving beyond that, helping people uh, really get over some struggles that they deal with. And one other thing I want to touch on, you talked about the stigma, and one thing I've been talking about a lot is that Mental toughness is important, but to talk about your mental health is not a sign of weakness, but actually a sign of strength. Yeah, absolutely. And, and if we can continue to turn that narrative and change that narrative where young people can feel empowered, and I think the most important thing is if someone comes and says, hey, P, I want to talk for a minute, you have to have almost a lawyer-client confidentiality going on, mm -hmm. but you're not just going to go run and just tell that for the sake of telling it. Now, if you're saying, hey, I'm kind of concerned about Lindsay, I'm kind of concerned about press, so maybe we should give some more attention, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But I think the other part is that there's such toxicity, man, that whenever somebody gets a nugget of something that can be negative about someone else because they got their own insecurities, they want to run with it. What do you think? I absolutely agree with you. I, um, a lot of times, like we say in this generation, they just they, it's all about having your moment. It's all about the clout, as they say. And so if you have some dirt on someone that you can go and share with someone else, they use that against people. And, and you're right. we got to stop doing that. we got to have that that uh, patient confidentiality to where if someone tells you something, you're going to the correct parties and you're addressing it to them, wow. a counselor, a, a parent, a doctor, and letting them know that, hey, I'm, I'm worried about this kid. Maybe we should focus on him a little more. Talking to a true leader in the community, great young man, not only as a coach, just with the conversations he's having. I think, Preston, we got to continue to have these conversations. So I want to thank you for all that you do. Anyone you want to give a shout-out to before we wrap up? Anything you want to say as we sign off? Uh, my freshman boys basketball team, uh, you know, the guys, uh, I love you. You guys work hard. You play hard. Uh, before we go, I do want to say one great thing that this community does. Um, it's new to this school and to the middle school this year as a student advocate position. Student advocate position yep. at East Lansing High School. East Lansing High School. So there's one Tell individual. Me more about that. There's one individual in both schools, um, and they're given or they're assigned, I should say, um, a few kids. It's a caseload. It just depends on mm. on what's going on. It's five to ten kids, um, and they really focus in and hone in with those kids, the kids that they think can be trouble or have had signs of trouble before. Um, and so I think that's something that's really good that the East Lansing community has put into their school system. It's different from a counselor. It's different from an advisor. Uh -huh. They focus in with a few troubled kids that have had a troubled past, and they try to get them on the right track. And so I think that's something great that East Lansing. Well, that's great to know they're taking these steps. So you heard it here first. Lindsay Hellison, SPS, is in the building uh, having a mental health moment over at the East Lansing versus Waverly game. One of the great coaches, not in basketball, but to help this next generation. Preston, I appreciate you. Absolutely. Okay? We'll see you guys man. next time. Signing off.